It's a new week, which means it's time to kick off this work-filled five days with hot news. Hot news. Reese, did you finish the jingle over the weekend? No. What the freaking crap did you do then? Oh, you built a Gundam? Look at that. That actually looks really nice. But still, people want the freaking jingle. Do your job, get it done, or you're fired. Get it, guys? Fired? Hot news? It was a temperature pun. Hot as in temperature. Anyways, this episode should actually be a bit more lighthearted than Friday's episode, so let's just give it a go. Give it a go is a coded signal. Sig a signal for what? Are you going to give it a go? So on Friday, we reported how the new fancy 4K 144Hz HDR G-Sync monitors actually can't do true 4K at those frame rates, which really sucks. But there's a new report out suggesting that some 27-inch 1440p monitors actually have 4K panels in them. The reason for this is that the cost of the 4K panels can be cheaper than the 2560 by 1440 panels because of a low supply for the 1440p variant. The 4K panels, however, can't be used as 4K on the monitor as the firmware prevents you from scaling it above the resolution that they set it for. There's not a whole lot of benefits or drawbacks to this besides uh, text might be harder to read if the monitor is scaling to its actual 4K resolution. The best thing we could hope for is that there might be a bypass for the firmware and you could actually use the 4K resolution, although there's no report on which specific models or companies are shipping out 1440p monitors this way. But other than all of that, it's just a fun fact due to the economics of panel production. But speaking of the economics of panel production, you know how G-Sync monitors always cost a gigaton more than normal or even FreeSync monitors? Well, that's because the G-Sync module in the monitors costs a freaking insane amount. So in a teardown by PC perspective on the new ASUS PG27UQ 4K 144Hz G-Sync monitor, they found that the G-Sync module in it actually has a quite a few upgrades over its previous version. The G-Sync module has an Intel FPGA processor, three gigabytes of DDR4 2400 MHz RAM up from the 768 megabytes on the previous module and adds nearly $500 of the total price of the monitors. That's right, if these things weren't G-Sync, they'd cost $1,500 instead of $2,000. The expensive FPGAs that NVIDIA is using here actually retail for about $2,600, but due to bulk discounts that NVIDIA would likely be getting, the price drops to a paltry 500 bucks. Considering the fact that these displays can't even do the 144 Hz HDR 4K thing that they're kind of supposed to, the additional 33% cost to just have G-Sync also is a baffling choice to me. But what do you think of the insane cost of G-Sync modules? Worth it? Isn't to me. But even if we all expect G-Sync monitors to be pricey, we probably don't expect Apple to admit they've done an oopsie. But that's exactly what they've done. We did a video previously discussing how a lot of people were having the butterfly keys on their MacBooks simply stop responding because of dust and other crap getting underneath the keycaps. The only solution to this was to pay for a costly service from Apple, even though it appeared to be a manufacturing defect. Thankfully and unexpectedly, the company is now offering an extended warranty on specific models regarding keyboard issues, including letters or characters repeat unexpectedly, letters or characters do not appear, and keys feel sticky or do not respond in a consistent manner. If you take any of these models to Apple or an authorized Apple service provider, the models that are on the screen, then they will service your keyboards free of charge. I just used the words Apple and free of charge in the same sentence. You're welcome. Well done Apple for actually acknowledging this issue and helping users get it taken care of. Now if you could only find a way to actually service your iMac Pros. You know who else isn't able to fix things? ZTE apparently, and not their mobile devices, but a urinal. Yes, apparently the phone manufacturer is claiming they cannot fix a broken urinal in their office because it's produced by the American Standard Company that's based in the US. The reason that it matters that it's produced by American Standard is that the US Department of Commerce recently banned exports to ZTE. The sign above the broken urinal roughly translates as, quote, our company is now subject to the export ban posed by the US government. Since this bathroom appliance is a product of American Standard, we can't procure the spare parts for repair due to the export ban. When the export ban is lifted, we promise to get the parts, repair it, and resume operation at once. We regret any inconvenience this may have caused. You probably should have said any incontinence this may have caused. And I just have one thing to say to ZTE. You're in trouble. <laughs> Two urine puns in a row. You're welcome. I'm gonna see myself out.
Bye. And now it's time for today's segment of hardware rumors that everyone is tired of being rumored about, but they still click on and give us a bunch of views for. So first up, Intel looks to be rebadging Z370 as Z390. So instead of producing a brand new chipset on the newer 14 nanometer process, like they've done for B360, H310, etc., it looks like Intel could just be producing the Z390 chipset on the exact same 22 nanometer process as the current Z370 chipset. This is likely due to the fact that the production facilities for 14 nanometers have been incredibly busy because Intel is unable to transition to the 10 nanometer fab process for their CPUs at this point because they're having difficulty actually getting the architecture correct. So instead of providing an actual change to the chipset, it seems that Z390 motherboards will likely have upgraded VRM to help with powering the eight core 16 thread CPUs that are also rumored to launch as well as some quality of life improvements that are already present on budget Coffee Lake chipsets while not changing the process design for the Z390 chipset. So basically like the B360 is more of it's more than the Z390 would be. Fantastic Intel rumor news once again. Then secondly, we have rumors about Qualcomm's upcoming Snapdragon 1000 SoCs. It appears that Qualcomm wants to compete with Intel in the ultra portable section and that their Snapdragon 1000 will go toe to toe with the Y and U series processors from Team Blue. There's no benchmarks just yet, but apparently the test system for the 1000 SoC had 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM, 256 gigabytes of UFS flash storage, 802.11 AD Wi-Fi, and gigabit LTE. Hopefully we'll hear about the Team Red processor more as it gets closer to its release. And yes, I refer to them as Team Red because they're Team Red on mobile, okay? Okay, that's how it works. And then we have a little teaser from NVIDIA that makes us salivate over the new GPUs. On Saturday, they wished happy birthday to happy Alan Turing. Birthday! Wait a second, so what? They wished a guy happy birthday? Well, first off, they don't do this all the time. In fact, they've only publicly said happy birthday to three other science dudes on Twitter. The first was Einstein on Pi Day last year, because it's freaking Einstein. Then second was to Nikola Tesla last July, because they have the Tesla architecture. And the third oak was Ivan Sutherland just about a month ago, and he's regarded as the father of computer graphics. So this isn't an everyday kind of event. And the reason that this is potentially significant is that the upcoming GPUs are rumored to be running on a yet to be announced architecture called Turing. It's what we expect. And not only is it intriguing that they chose to say HBD to the Turingnator, but their choice of quote from him was interesting as well. The quote that they chose says, we can only see a short distance ahead, but we can see plenty there that needs to be done. Short distance obviously is alluding to the time frame of the new GPUs and is in direct contradiction of Jensen's phrasing of a long time for now, because as I mentioned in a previous hot news, that was just code for shut up about the 11 series already and just talk about what I talked about here at Computex today. So consider my interest peaked with this tweet. They've definitely rustled my jimmies. I want some GPU goodness, but then, on the other hand, Hardware Unboxed just released a video with an exclusive first look at some of the deets of the next generation card that puts all of my journalism to shame. So link in the description for that. You can check it up right now, there. Highly recommend that you check that out. And that's gonna wrap it up today for our segment of hardware rumors that everyone is tired of being rumored about, but they still click on and give us a bunch of views for. And then we have Bethesda suing Warner Brothers over their Westworld game, saying that it's too similar to Fallout shelters. Just like how this show is a direct rip off of Pew News, the Philip DeFranco show and TechLinked. And then Mt. Gox has said that it may start paying people their money back starting next year, which is perfect considering Bitcoin's value has been going up recently. Wait, what's that take? Wait, it went below $6,000? Holy crap, oh, no wonder they're paying people back. It's not gonna cost them anything. And then there's a nifty vertical holder for the Nintendo Switch on Kickstarter that recently met its funding goal. Seems pretty cool if you're into retro games or anything that plays in a vertical format, but it's also a project on Kickstarter, so beware, you might not ever get it even though it actually looks like it kinda could be 3D printed if you were ambitious enough. They're thankfully only charging $12 for the contraption, so it's not a whole heck of a lot of money. And in case you're still rocking a processor from before the year 2000 and are on Windows 7 for some reason, then you won't be getting updates anymore. Microsoft has disabled processors that don't support SSSE2 instruction set from getting updates on Windows 7, which is basically anything before the Pentium 4. Sorry, my Pentium 3 homies. And then if you wanna know how the pop-up selfie cam pure screen phone of the Vivo Next works, there's a Tandown article over on the 
the My Fix Guide website that you can check out, link in the description for that. And then in news that makes you question your sanity, Microsoft and Razer are collaborating on new gaming peripherals for the Xbox. So Microsoft has previously spoken to developers at the beginning of the year about their plans for keyboard and mouse support on the Xbox. There's been leaked documents that they plan to team up with Razer to start using these accessories, potentially utilizing Razer's turret, which is their, you know, lap-based video game engager. It seems that RGB lighting support on the Razer products could see it coming to the exponers as well. This also comes alongside information about how game developers can use an API to help make sure that keyboard and mice aren't being used unfairly on the console because controller users just wouldn't be able to keep up and would rage and just make the Xbox community even worse than it already is. And speaking of keeping up, you're caught up to date on all of the latest tech news as of 4.47 p.m. South African Standard Time on Monday, June 25th. Everything that comes out between now and when you watch this video isn't my fault, okay? I have to get this video done. In, in a certain time frame. Yes, so that means that today's hot news, hot news, is officially concluded, and we better freaking have a jingle tomorrow, Reese, okay? Or you're not gonna have a job, you understand? Let me know which was your favorite article that we talked about today. What are you most excited for? What do you think is the least basis rumor that we have talking about? Chat about that down in the comments. I wanna hear your conversation part down there because I want to dialogue with you anyways. Be sure to smash that like button while you're down there. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. And if you're looking to pick up any computer parts, you can use our affiliate codes that are in the video description. It helps us out a lot, supports the channel, makes things go around keeps hot news going. You can buy these nano leafs. You guys ask about these all the time, these RGB light things. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for hot news today. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Cheers. How that happened, jeez. <laughs> when did you warn me? I said give it a go, didn't I? And that meant a street ninja was skulking out in the woods. It's a code signal.